y'all, this is Anna Alexander. It is Friday night, an opening weekend of the movie title that I always want to mix the words around. The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, AKA the Nicolas Cage movie. Okay, okay, so I had seen the trailer. I thought, hmm, interesting concept, might be fun to check out at some point in time. And then for some reason, last late last week, earlier this week, something in my head said, I think people are gonna be talking about this movie. Go see it opening weekend. Y'all, <laughs> I was not prepared for how much I enjoyed this movie. I love this movie. It is so fucking good to the point where I'm thinking, was it as good as I think it is? But at this moment in time, it is amazeballs. And the great horrible thing is, the less you know about it going in, think the more you're going to enjoy it. Seriously, seriously. So I'm going to try my hardest not to give away any spoilers because I want you to see it. You have to see it. It is a must see, but I, I can't spoil it for you. I can't because you just need to sit and let it wash over you as it is going. The odd thing about this movie is if you were to just break it down very, very simply, the pitch is an actor who is having an identity of self, trying to decide if they want to continue to pursue a career they have dedicated their life to and are fa is facing constant rejection. They are then hired to attend a party of a bajillionaire and uh, in an unsuspecting way, rediscovers their love of the craft. That's essentially what this movie is about. So you could, in theory, have the protagonist be Tom Lampos, played by Nicolas Cage. And the movie, I think, would still be successful. I think it would still be great. But the protagonist is Nicolas Cage, played by Nicolas Cage. So it adds this level of crazy pants, awesome horribleness to it. <laughs> It just elevates it. And the, but the weird thing is that it's Nicolas Cage, but it's also not Nicolas Cage. You do not have to have seen all of the Nicolas Cage movies to enjoy this at all in any split. No, no, you don't have to. You actually don't have to know a lot about Nicolas Cage as well, because again, it's him, but it's not him. Because his family in this movie is not his family. They're not portrayed by his family. They're not his family. Neil Patrick Harris plays his agent. Neil Patrick Harris is not his agent. So... Again, it could have been any actor, his journey of this movie, but it's Nicolas Cage and it's great. The other odd, funny odd thing is you get that tagline, actor, identity crisis, hired to do a party, finds the love of the craft. And then you tack onto it. The bajillionaire is a crime lord and the CIA ropes in the actor to help take him down. That's the other crazy bet like what what and that's what happens this whole film you get some okay I get this tacked on with ridiculousness okay I get it ridiculousness okay I get it ridiculousness and it's wonderful <laughs> it works so well and it is so meta it is deep diving in the meta because it's also a story about storytelling and movie making in Hollywood. And a very subtext light, I'm gonna steal this line from a movie, it's nuanced. It's very nuanced. <laughs> in a way that I'm watching it, I was laughing so hard. I was probably bothering the people next to me. And it was a crowded theater. We were in the smaller theater, crowded. But I was laughing so hard because they keep doing the thing. And I'm watching this going, oh, okay. Wait, they're not gonna lay that tile down. Oh my gosh, they did. Okay, but they're not gonna, oh, they did. Oh, look how they're putting these pieces out. This is how they're putting the pieces out. Brilliant, brilliant. And again, you wanna say, Anna, that makes no sense. And I know, <laughs> but I don't want to spoil it. 
for you. And that's the thing, I need everyone to go see it so then I can talk to them about it later because it's just fun. It's just a fun wackadoo movie that I hope does well. I hope does well. And me being so excited about it, it's for me hysterical having watched the movie, seeing what happens. Yeah, again, so meta. So meta. What can I say also that won't be too much of a spoiler? So Nicolas Cage is in it. He is great being a version of himself. I don't think he's being fully himself. I think he's being a version of himself. I hope to God it's a version of himself because if this is really him, how exhausting. But he's great in it. Pedro Pascal is a treasure. I think if I was on the set watching him, I would be laughing constantly and they would kick me off of the set and hide me away because he just stands there and just does the eye thing. And I'm busting, I'm laughing so hard. He's a big puppy dog in this movie and it's hilarious. And it, it's a buddy film. I guess you could say it's a buddy film, but it's great. And then you're in Spain, supposedly it's gorgeous. It's beautiful and it's just so witty and so clever. You know how I love witty dialogue and it's got so much witty dialogue. Oh, yeah, it was, it was great. So as always, when I try to give you my two cents, should you go see this movie? Fuck yeah, you need to see this movie. Do you need to see it in the theater? If you can, go out, see it in the theater. Cause again, I think you will have a really, really good time. I love when things I am glad when my time is spent well, especially when it's such a surprise. Like I wasn't, I was hoping it didn't suck. I was hoping I would have a good time. And I had an amazing time. This <laughs> is such a fun film. And I want everyone to go see it and then come talk to me about it. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> in a nutshell. So I hope you all have a good weekend, that you've gone out and had some joy. I've had some joy tonight. I wish I had other people with me, cause again, but yeah, so thank you all for being here for these two seconds and I hope to see you soon. So until next time, y'all.